How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 69 of Park 2 Primero. We are back here on the club profile screen. There's a new player, uh, Hannibal Medgebury. Remember this guy? If you're a, a viewer of the live streams, you might remember him from last year. He's joined us from Manchester United in uh, one of the more bizarre transfer moves I think I've ever had. One where we've loaned him for a game and then signed him permanently. Uh, and as you can tell, just looking at him, he's really, really blooming good. Now, this is the only move that I've made in January, and it was a little bit of a weird one because... I didn't have any transfer budget and Hannibal was transfer listed. I could afford his wages, although they were quite hefty. So I made a, a loan deal with Manchester United to loan him to the end of the year with the option to buy him at the end of the year for £59 million. A massive sum of money. Make absolutely no mistake, though. He's phenomenal. He is the Pablo Torre replacement, a player who I feel like we've lent on perhaps a little too much over the years. I think if we just compare the two of them here... You can just see that this is a, this is taking things up a really big level. He was transfer listed at Manchester United, where he, of course, does start. As you can see, was never really given a chance at Manchester United. Had a loan spell last year uh, in La Liga playing for Real Madrid. I actually played fairly frequently the first half of the year in the Premier League, but was still transfer listed and wasn't happy at the club. Um, so we loaned him, and then I went about trying to free up the funds to then sign him permanently. And, well... I'm pleasantly surprised with how we were able to free up those funds because the first thing we did was to recall Jal Resende. Uh, he, of course, was on loan at Celta where he'd had an OK loan at the club and we've sold him on to Cagliari for £7.5 which, you know, it's a bit of a shame that Resende never really got a shot in the first team. At the same time, he joined us five years ago on a free transfer to get £7.5 million out of him. I think it's some really good business, but not quite as good business as Lovro Meyer, who... Uh, we signed on a free at the start of the year. We've now sold him to Benfica for £50 million, an absolutely astronomical sum of money, really. Um, Mejbury was only £9 million more than Maya, just to kind of put things in perspective. If we compare the two of them here, you can see outside of set pieces, Hannibal is the better player, but Maya's set pieces really were inflating his returns. Five assists, three goals, most of these against lesser opposition, it's worth noting as part of our rotated 11. His average rating was the best in the league, but we weren't using him that much, and I didn't feel like he was an irreplaceable player for us. Only seven starts in the first half of the year. So I sold him for 50 million. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think it's a mental piece of business. I think it's a really smart bit move. Obviously, time will tell. And with Resende and Maya departing us for a combined 57 million, that just about freed up the money to go and sign Hannibal a week after he joined on loan for that pre agreed optional loan fee. It was a bit of a weird transfer saga, but we got our man in the end, and he is here permanently. I mean, I'm very excited. <laughs> now, besides that transfer saga, we have, of course, had the uh, the Super Copper as well as a couple of league games to talk about over the winter break. Uh, since your last year, we did play Sevilla and we beat them 4-0. This was a really, really good performance. All the goals came in the first half, which is a little bit of a weird one. Sandro Tonali picking up player of the match in this game. Now, um, the reason he's picked up player of the match is because he was taking all the set pieces in this game. And as you can see, as a result of that, he's got 16 key passes. Now, the way FM21 works is a lot of set pieces count as key passes. So if you have a set piece taker, even if they don't get that many assists, it will just massively bloat their average rating. We have had that to an extent with Pablo Torre previously, but this year it's been more about Tenali. That said, he still did get two assists in this game. All the goals came before half time. Even Avramides got on the score sheet. And, well, good news for half of you here. Uh, he's still here at the moment. I have offered him out to clubs and I offered him out for 81 million. There is interest. We haven't had a bid yet in January. And well into January, we go in terms of fixtures. To kick off the new year, we drew 1-1 against Celta Vigo. I don't know how we drew 1-1 against Celta Vigo. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see the stats here. They had one shot. It went in. We ended up getting a last-minute goal via Barakdar. So very great, grateful for Guk Deniz. He uh, seems to bail us out on the regular. But there's no kind of... Smoothing it over. That's an awful result. And then we went on to lose in the Super Copper 2 0. Lukaku got a late goal as we were chasing the game, but fundamentally we weren't good enough. And uh, well, we slipped up again in La Liga with a 0 0 draw against Valencia. The only silver lining to all of this is against Osasuna, we won 1 0. Hannibal scored in this game. Uh, let's take a look at it. 
So this this goal that you're about to see was before I signed him permanently. This was the moment where I thought, I need him. I need, I have to sign him. Scores the free kick 20 minutes into that game. Osasuna didn't have a shot on target. I mean, I just want to show you the formation that Osasuna like to play everyone and shame them for it. Actually, that's that's different to the lineup they played against. Well, this is awkward, isn't it? Right, I went into the into the inner recess as a football manager to show you what they played against us. They played a 5-4-1. Osasuna, sort your lives out. I'm very glad we beat them 1-0. Um, and thank God that Hannibal scored the free kick because I have no idea if we would have broken down this shape from open play. Uh, very anti-football. So that catches you up to date a little bit with what's going on. Elsewhere, Champions League, first knockout round. We've been drawn against Benfica again. The amount of times we've played against Portuguese teams over the year in the Champions League this season in Football Manager just feels absolutely mad. I feel like FM21 for me has been the, the season of clashing against Portuguese teams in Europe. So hopefully we're going to get a good result then. Uh, obviously, we're also through the Copa del Rey. As for the Super Copa, we don't talk about the Super Copa. In the league, despite drawing two games, we're still actually in quite a good spot all things considering. We are five points ahead of Barcelona. We take them on today. And, uh, well, if we could beat them, we'd pull very far clear. And, well, despite drawing those two games, you can see here Real Madrid continuing to struggle. It's a really weird season for everyone. Now, don't be mistaken. Just because I'm not selling Amphromedes and I've only made one new signing yet that we're done this window. There's still stuff we're looking to do, including the fact that Lille have made a bid for Fabian Velez. They've bid 46.5 million. He's actually told me he's not interested in the move. I'd be interested in him making the move. As much as I love Velez, as much as it's great that he's homegrown, it's £46 million for probably my fourth, if not my my fifth best centre-back, dare I say. I mean, I look at the centre-backs, of course, this year, Galaretta, who I don't feel like I've sung his praises enough. He's been very good this year. He has played alongside Guardiola, of course, came in as a record transfer and has really lived up to my expectations. On the bench, we've had Nyan Zhu, who's done okay. And then we kind of come then to Velez. And, uh, well, actually, Velez and Sadu are not a million miles away from one another. I'll let you decide which man you would rather have playing at centre-back. But ultimately, for my fourth-choice defender, I just I can't not take £46 million. With that money, we can reinvest it. We'll probably be able to find an equally good backup centre-back. And despite Velez being homegrown at club, of course, in Europe, you need four homegrown players at club. You can see right now we've actually got seven homegrown players at club. So it's not even like there's... That to consider, really, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, what would you do? Please let me know. What would you do here? I think 46 million is too much to say no to. So that's a little bit of a headache for me to deal with. Elsewhere, João Pedro looks like he could be on his way to FC Utrecht. Uh, I think for £5 million. Yes, £5 million. If it happens, it happens. 19 years old. We picked him up for £1.1 million at the start of last season. He's actually been a really useful player for our B team. But £5 million for a player who doesn't appear to have all that much potential feels like a bit of business that we just have to make do and do now and to be fair when it comes to the b team there's been a couple of other players who have made moves as of late um you can see here Gurria has departed us can you remember Gurria? maybe you can remember him about six years ago he came through a youth intake and he looked like he might have some potential he had no potential he achieved nothing he ended up being very useless the other man who's left us actually is mad jensen who i've decided to let go to psg for nine million pounds we signed him for 3.5 million from copenhagen last couple of years he's played in the b team although this most recent year he wasn't playing all that much when psg came in with an offer of nine million pounds plus a sell-on clause it was a little bit of a no-brainer to make that happen, to give us a little bit more in the way of money to work with. And despite his departure, I think it would be safe to say, looking at the centre attack in mid-position, um, we're not exactly lacking players in this area of the pitch. If he goes on to develop, we have a sell-on, even if he doesn't. I've pocketed £9 million from PSG. I don't really care. So with the Hannibal signing, you can see here, we do still have £7 million in the bank. The wage budget as well, um, there's still a healthy amount left in it, £120,000. So don't consider our transfer business done just yet. I feel like in signing Hannibal, I've already done more than I really anticipated we'd do. But it was very much an opportunistic signing. When a player this good is transfer listed, wants to leave Manchester United and is available for £60 million, 
I feel like you kind of just have to go in and make it happen. I'm hoping he's going to live up to the hype. And I guess with the departures of Maya and Resende, we've more than covered that cost. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy. And it makes me think that Pablo Torre maybe can return to Bayern Munich for a little bit. You know, we've had him on loan for many, 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 many years. I feel like Hannibal's the man to come in and maybe change things up. I'm already looking at the possibility of perhaps changing the role that we use for the centre attack in mid in our system to make more use of Hannibal. Um, truth be told, he's just a phenomenal talent. He can also slot in at centre mid, which is super useful. I think for us, he's going to play centre attack in mid. Uh, yeah, I'm very, very excited to see what becomes of him. I think it might be my best transfer so far in terms of just raw quality of a player at a very, very good price. Anyway, I've now spent 10 minutes bigging him up. He'll probably get sent off in this game against Barcelona. It's away from home against them. Of course, last time out, we beat Real Madrid away. If we can beat Barcelona away, we're the real deal. Um, one thing that I feel like I've not talked about enough this year is the fact we've conceded eight goals in 21 games. Defensively, we have been absolutely nutty. That is the official adjective of our defence. It's a nutty defence, everyone. It's like a Snickers bar. If you turned it into a defence, that would be us. Um... Yeah, eight goals conceded. That is half anyone else has conceded. Um, and we only conceded, I think, one against Barcelona when we played them last time. So hopefully we're going to have a good performance here. Looking at the team, it's full strength. Hannibal comes in for Pablo Torre. The rest of the team looks very, very standard. Let's, let's see how we get on. So just a quick little peek at the Barcelona team. You can see they've got Testegen in goal. Uh, Deviv, I don't know who Deviv is. I want to find out who Deviv is. Iga Deviv, I assumed he was a regen. He's not. He's very, very good at centre-back. And that's about it. He's a proper defender's defender. Uh, elsewhere, they've got Stoyanshu. They've got Bolde at left-back. Their big man to be afraid of is this man. Uh, I have seen him asked in the comment section, can I show this guy? He has the most assists in the league. I don't know how you say his name. Is it... Gerrit Xhaka? I, I, how do you say the X in Spanish? Never had this problem before. Either way, he's, he, he's nutty as well. It's a very nutty episode today. I'm going to have to put a, a warning on this episode, I feel like. He was signed for £90 million for them from Athletic Club Bilbao. Um, I can see why they were willing to spend that much. Uh, he's scary, but I think that we're just as scary. So hopefully we're going to be fine. Burela, Diallo and De Bruyne... Ain't a bad little midfield setup, is it? They've got Guiri up front as well. As for ourselves, it's the team that you know and love. Avramides. I still, I'm still keeping faith. I'm still keeping faith. I saw in the comment section of yesterday's video, there's a party of people that hate Avramides, and there's a party of people that love Avramides, and they're clashing in the comment section. I think we all want him to succeed a little bit. But I do feel like he might be the most divisive player in any Let's Play I've ever done. I can't work out if I love or hate the man I, I, myself. Many of you want to see him do well. Many of you just think I've, I've given him too much patience, really. This might sound a little bit defeatist, considering we're half an hour in. I'd be quite happy with an away draw here against Barcelona. Of course, if we could win, that would be nice too. But as long as we can maintain the five-point gap, it's still pretty good in terms of for our prospects here, as Kapanu has it now. Kapanu's had a bit of interest in him. I've rejected it all, but he doesn't want to extend his contract yet. And Avramides has scored, and Thomas Estevez with the hair has assisted. Oh my word, that is an unlikely combo, isn't it? But Avramides has scored. The Avramides fan club, they're, they're rejoicing right now. Just going back to the Kapanu situation. He and Corridor, I think, have got a year and a half left on their current deals, or two and a half years left on their current deals. In Kapanu's case, I think Arsenal and Manchester City and Bayer Leverkusen have all made bids. He's got a release clause in his contract of £70 million. I genuinely think he's one of the best ball-winning midfielders in the world. Um... Maybe I'm deluded. I don't think I am. I genuinely think he is. He's, he ticks all the boxes for the ball-winning midfielder. Um, but as a result of all this interest being shown in him, he's not a very happy bunny. Um, I mean, the highest bid we had, I think, was like £28 million with clauses. He's valued not that highly because of his low contract, but he's got the release clause. If someone triggers it, they can have him. If they don't, they're not having, well, anything to do with him. Also, Soyuncu and Estevez having the best performances. I've just realised, and I can't compare them, I don't think, here. Can I compare? I can. Who's got the better hair? It's like a face-off of the hair, really, isn't it? Maybe we just need to encourage all our players to grow their hair long. Kind of gives you some kind of power. To be fair, Hannibal has a fantastic hairdo himself, so 
Maybe I should just start signing players for their haircuts. Is that a viable strategy? Right, half an hour gone here. We're still a goal to the good, which I'm very, very happy about. But I'm going to change things up slightly in a bit of an odd way, perhaps. Um, I'm going to do something that I'm weighing up as a possible option down the line. And what I want to see happen here is... Uh, I want to see... Uh, where's the left-back? Here he is. Um, I want to see the wide attacking players for us, Porro and Avramides, really mark tightly the wing-backs. And then we're going to leave Hannibal up kind of just down the middle and see what he can do for us. I think we're doing this. We'll have Hannibal playing off Siapina. It probably makes more use of Hannibal's attributes going forward. And equally, players like Pedro Porro particularly are quite good at defending. I feel like I can bring him in to do that kind of job for us. Anyway, Hannibal, Siapina, linking up well. The ball bounces through fortuitously. The change has been in place for about two minutes. It's worked wonders straight away. Maybe I'm a genius. Two goals up. And with our defensive record... I think I think this is in the can. I think this is in the bank. I think we've done this. Siapina, Hannibal... Bit fortunate how it made its way through. Maybe Hannibal's vision allowed him to see it bounce off the two defenders and go to uh, Siapina. That's what I'm going to claim is the case. And well, could we have another here? I mean, Barcelona at this point, at home, two goals down. They're going to be going on the offensive. It's going to leave opportunities for us. As Avramides is through and forward, he can't finish it there, but he's looking confident, isn't he? I'm going to take off Pedro Porro for Barakdar. Elsewhere, I'm going to take off Tonali and I'm going to bring in Tolisso just to get some fresh legs into the middle. But um, much like the games we've had this year, this is commanding and controlling, isn't it? I mean, if we just actually get the match stats up here with bars, you can see they've had one shot all game. Their XG is 0.35, ours is 0.74. Um... We're just, we're just playing quite nicely, and it's it's all very nice to watch this year. I'm looking forward to a Champions League run now. Maybe I'm getting a bit carried away. Hannibal playing as a shadow striker now. I think this is probably his best role, so I'm curious to see how he does there. Perez, Gukton is, is there. It's 3-0. It's annihilation. It's humiliation. We've beaten Real Madrid 3-0. We've beaten Barcelona 3-0, and if things stay as they are... Um, I mean, we could be top of the league by eight points with, you know, better head-to-head -head with both teams. I'm still scared of the bottle. I'm still scared of the bottle, but this just feels like our year. I don't, I don't want to sound entitled. I don't want to sound kind of like it's a mad conspiracy. It just feels like it's fallen into place. I was saying it yesterday. It's like a cycle that I'm in. We draw a couple of games against the rubbish teams. We beat one of the big teams, and I think... It's got to be us. Also, VAR's checking this for offside. Is it going to be given? It is not going to be given. We keep the clean sheet with three minutes left, which on the one hand, it's great. On the other hand, I have to pay off my players for that, don't I? Right, final change of the game. Corridor's coming on for three minutes. The fan club can't complain today he's not played. He's featured. You've not seen him touch the ball yet. I mean, he could still do it before the episode's over. Where is he? Corridor? There, we found him. It's like, where's Waldo or Wally? It's Wally in England. Where's Wally? I think in America it's Waldo. I don't know. Avramides, could we get four? No, no, no. We, I mean, did anyone really believe he was going to score there? Because I didn't. I mean, let's not lose the clean sheet at the death, please. Will Corridor get his touch? The guy who I don't know how to say his name, but he's very scary, nearly puts the ball into the middle, but we're fine. Ref, you can end the game now, mate. We've played an extra minute. We've dealt with the ball. Just just end it. Just end it. Please. Please. I want the clean sheet. In other saves, I'd want the clean sheet to be lost so I don't have to pay the defenders. But with how our defending's going this year, I want to see us keep a clean sheet at the new Camp. And, uh, well, we've done just that. 3-0, emphatic performance. We are eight points clear at the top of the table. 16 games left of the season. I've got, we've got to win it from here. We've got to win it from here. Um, Tolisso gets some revenge. Of course, he was sold to us by Barcelona after being a very loyal servant. For us, he's been a fantastic addition for 2.2 million. He might have to be up there for transfer of the year, to be honest. And, uh, well, look, we're the better team. We don't have the better quality. But we've got a unit here, and it's a unit now that I'm hoping is going to go on a little Copa del Rey run. 
to keep me intrigued. In terms of when we're going to be back next time, I'll see how the Copa del Rey goes. I'm looking at the games against Benfica and against Atleti back-to-back, -back, thinking that could be rather appetising. But depending on how the league goes, it might be a case of that tomorrow we come back for a double header against Benfica, play those first two knockout round games uh, in one episode and see how we get on. Um, we'll play it by ear. We'll see how the league table's looking. If we're pulling away, that game against Atleti could be critical in creating an insurmountable league. In the flip side, um, I really want to do well in this Copa del Rey. I don't think we've ever gone far in the Copa del Rey year on year. A Real Madrid still in it because they've won it a lot. Uh, they are. They've got Espanyol. We've been drawn against Melilla who I've not heard of, and the reason I've not heard of them is because they're a lower league team. I think they're the lowest ranked team in the competition. So we've got lucky. We should be going a little bit further. And, yeah, I mean, I just want to win some silverware. The Copa del Rey would be nice. La Liga would be nice. Champions League for the treble? Maybe. But anyway, folks, that is going to wrap everything from us for today. I feel like a little bit of deja vu. This feels like yesterday's episode, the way we're concluding. We've beaten one of our big rivals, 3-0. We've kept a clean sheet away from home. We remain top of the league table. Tell your pet dog, tell your grandma, tell your parents when you sat down at the dinner table tonight. Racing are going to be La Liga champions. It's happening. I've called it now. I believe. I hope you do too. And well, until next time, it is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.